Gonzaga Baylor, Gonzaga UCLA in his first two hours, and I'm sure we're going to go back to it here in the next couple of minutes. Let me just sort of set up the uh, rest of the sports world here from the weekend and today for a couple minutes, take a break and get you right back on the, tr- on the, on the wagon, on the train here as we uh, take you to the uh, top of the hour. And of course, uh, 3 o'clock in the West, 6 o'clock in the East. Uh, the Jets today made a trade, so that confirms Zach Wilson, something we already knew anyway. Uh, Carolina obviously can't go near Watson right now. Watson's stuck. Uh, so their uh, penchant to make a move with him with the eighth pick in a draft, that wasn't going to work either. Uh, Carolina went the next best way, so they're going to hope that Matt Rule can figure out a way to unleash Sam Donald. So they make a run at him. They give up three draft picks. I think they gave up a third, a sixth, a fourth, sixth, and a future second. Three total picks to get Donald from the Jets to go down to Carolina. So Carolina, which I, I don't know if they have parted ways with Bridgewater or if he's still there, I, I'm not sure what that story is. I would think they, if, if they brought Donald in, I would part ways with Bridgewater because you don't want Donald playing with Bridgewater looking over his shoulder. So if you think maybe that Donald could be your answer, I mean, yeah, you know, it's not Bridgewater. He's a good stop back. He's a good bridge quarterback, but he's not the answer. At that, He's a good stop back quarterback, but he's not the future. So you might as well get rid of Bridgewater and let Donald here give him a year see what he can do. Because, you know, let's face it. I mean, he was in a very tricky situation with the Jets. Banged up a lot. A lot of different coaches. Tough spot for him. So now a chance to redeem himself in Carolina. He's got a good offensive coach there. Joe Brady's the offensive coordinator. Uh, we shall see. So Donner goes to uh, Carolina there uh, for the three picks, which obviously solidifies what the Jets are going to do with Zach Wilson. They're going to make him the second pick. So then you're going to have the kid from North Dakota State and Trey Lance. You're going to have, obviously, if you want to go in this direction, uh, you have uh, Justin Fields. In that second scenario, you have the two quarterbacks available there after the Jets with Wilson. San Francisco, you would think, would draft a quarterback, maybe Mac Jones. Uh, I, I don't, you know, maybe. Uh, so San Francisco traded up to the third spot. And you don't trade up to the third spot from 12 unless you love a quarterback there to back up Garoppolo. Makes you think that they'll take one of these three. They knew they weren't going to get Wilson. So I would think that Shanahan, who's very confident in his ability to coach quarterbacks, I would think he'd sit there and, you know, think about, well, I love one of the three guys anyway. That's why they made the trade. Uh, We shall see. Carolina, you know, decided that Donald was maybe better than the prospects of trading up to get a quarterback. There is a rumor that Atlanta is off the quarterback bandwagon and they would trade down at four if you want to go there and talk to Atlanta. So uh, we shall see. Quarterback Central, Donald now to Carolina. Wilson to the Jets, that you know about. Watson's going nowhere. If he plays next year, he's going to be fortunate. But if he does play, it's going to be in Houston. So from that pers- which I don't know if he is going to play, but if he does, he's going to be with the uh, Texans because obviously Carolina has nothing to you- trade for. Now, listen, I guess you can make the argument if Watson somehow is cleared, nobody's going to want to go near him. So maybe he gets traded to a team and they're going to give up a high draft pick. Who knows? But the bottom line is right now, let's leave Watson out of the mix. Donna with Carolina. Somebody with San Francisco, Wilson with the Jets, either Lance Fields or Mac Jones with um, uh, with Shanahan out in San Francisco. Atlanta does not seem like it wants to go in that direction there. And then Cincinnati from pick number five. So that's the NFL scenario from that perspective. We'll keep an eye on that. Baseball uh, over the weekend. You know, listen, the Astros sweeping the A's. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, if you're going to be a fan of a team, that is in that division or has Houston on your schedule. You'd be better off when you go to the ball games this year if you do have a chance to go. That means if you go to Seattle, Anaheim, Dodger Stadium, wherever you go, lay off booing the Astros because the A's fans did that beginning on Thursday night and they left town with their pants off because the Astros destroyed Oakland this weekend. They scored eight runs in every single game which has never been done in the first of a four-game series. They forced Melvin to go to a positional player to finish up the fourth game yesterday. That's all you need to know. And the A's got destroyed by the Houston offense, a very good offense. Good job by Dusty. Houston 4-0. Oakland gets murdered. And here come the Dodgers in Alameda uh, for, the week at, for the week. So that's a major issue as far as Houston is con- as far as uh, the A's are concerned. Good job by the Phillies with a wonderful performance by their bullpen. Uh, when they beat the Braves three in a row. And I know Steve Stone told us and Steve Phillips, Steve Squared, both told us last week the White Sox are this and the White Sox are that because of this unbelievable, omnipresent, unhittable, 
both sides set up all that nonsense about that White Sox bullpen. A White Sox bullpen that spit on themselves and were awful. At the end of last year, they lost seven of their last eight. A White Sox bullpen that vomited all over themselves in the postseason against the A's. And a White Sox bullpen that blew a lead on opening day in the eighth, blew a lead on Saturday in the eighth, and then gave up a walk-off home run yesterday in the ninth. So I don't want to hear about that White Sox bullpen anymore as far as uh, the Sox are concerned. Mets will play their opener today against the Phillies at 7 with the Grom. The Nationals will not playing today against the Atlanta. They play tomorrow at 4 o'clock, their opener. And I don't like this because of the divisional alignment, and it's early in the year, but they will play a doubleheader on Wednesday at noon, which means they will start a doubleheader, seven-inning doubleheader, which I do not like as far as the uh, Nats and the Braves are concerned. They play many a time this year, number one. Number two, it's April 5th or April 6th. I hate the doubleheader so quickly so soon, but they will play a seven-inning doubleheader, two teams, two games at seven innings beginning Wednesday to get the three games in as far as Washington is concerned. That's the update you need to know with baseball. I read a lot of stuff this weekend, of course, as far as the Georgia legislature is concerned and, uh, you know, Manfred's call. Let's forget the politics. We talked about this on Friday. Let's forget the politics. You knew you were going to go 50-50 right down the middle. Half the world thinks it's the best move in the world that baseball left. The other half of the world thinks it's the worst move that baseball ever could, do- ever could have done. So, you know, you're not going to make or not going to convince your the other half that your half is right. So let's forget that. Let's forget the uh, political aspect, the political aspect of this. Let's just look at this from a Manford perspective. And we discussed this on Friday. And to quickly reiterate, bottom line is Manford had no choice. Whether you like it or not or whether you think he got, you know, he got uh, he got soft and he was, you know, he had no guts and all these things that I've heard people tell me all weekend. Manfred's job is not to show guts. Manfred's job is to make sure the All-Star game gets played. That's his job. His job right now is to lower the temperature in the sport. He's got negotiations next year for the, for the new labor agreement. He's trying to get a season underway and in good shape. He's trying to make sure there's fans back in the ballpark, and he wants to have an All-Star game, something they did not have last year. He wants to have an all-star game where there's at least a little peace and we can enjoy the home run derby and all the things they do at the all-star game, which is a huge convention. That's Manfred's job. The last thing Manfred can do, as I've said a thousand times in the last three days, the last thing Manfred could do is go to Atlanta and have 20 players boycott, including Bet Stanton and Judge, which they would do, and then have the rest. Do you think any player in baseball, you think Cody Bellinger is going to go to the all-star game in Atlanta if, uh, if Betts boycotts it? You think Judge is going to go to the All-Star game in Atlanta if Stanton doesn't go? What are you, crazy? Not a chance. Do you think any white player in baseball is going to go to the All-Star game if everybody says they're not going? What are you, crazy? No, not a chance. Manfred could not deal with that. So Manfred said, hold on now. I, I, whether, whatever I think, who cares? Doesn't make any difference what I think. Doesn't matter. I don't care you know, if you don't disagree. It doesn't make any difference. I have to save my All-Star game. That's my job. I got to get this game on TV, and I got to lower the temperature, and I got to get this game played, which also includes Home Run Derby, where we can celebrate the sport for uh, three or four days, something we could not do last year in the middle of July. That is what I have to do. And I got to make sure I celebrate Henry Aaron along the way. That's why Milwaukee has come up with a, is a possibility. But that is my job. My job is not to take sides. My job is not to go out there and take sides on the one hand who says we shouldn't leave Atlanta or take sides on the other hand who says we should leave. My job is to get the game going. That's my job. And in this case, my labor, my players are not going to play if we play the game in Atlanta. I can't have that. That's all this comes down to. So the people out there who are killing Manfred for bailing low, bailing out, they don't, they don't, they don't get it. They're, they have no idea what they're talking about. And there's a million of them doing that. Oh, how could Manfred do this? What a disgrace, blah, blah, blah. And by the same token, you're praising Manfred for doing this on the other side. That's not the answer either. Manfred did this for one reason, saving his all-star game. He's the commissioner of baseball, not the commissioner of the world, commissioner of baseball. I have to get this game played. If they're not going to come to Atlanta, and I'm not going to fight them on it because they're going to boycott the game because of what's going on in Atlanta, well, then we're taking the, we're taking the game out of Atlanta. I'm not going to make a stand that my labor doesn't want to be, that my labor doesn't agree with. I'm not taking that kind of stand. I'm out. You cannot blame him. It's not fair. You cannot blame him. He's in an impossible spot. 
His job is to get the game on. That's his job. And anybody who sits there, you know, Fox News and all these idiots who are killing them left and right, including the ex-president, who don't know their ass from their elbow, you can't blame the commissioner. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. When Betts, Stanton, and Judge aren't going to play, if you put the game in Atlanta, how the hell are you going to have the game there? Well, Mookie Betts is not going to play. You're going to have an all-star game in Atlanta? What are you, crazy? The whole world's not going to play. You think Dave Roberts is going to manage if Betts isn't playing? He's the manager. Can't play Manfred. All right, that's number three. Uh, good job by Spieth, who obviously did a wonderful job at the Valaro. I watched some of that late yesterday afternoon. Good performance all the way around with Spieth. Maybe a little momentum for him at the Masters, which begins on Thursday. Kepka, by the way, is going to practice. He did today, did Tuesday and Wednesday. He's going to play nine holes each day, so he's going to give it a go. Uh, no, obviously, we don't know there's no Tiger. Uh, you know, Spieth's had a very good fall, uh, spring. Now, he hasn't won, but he's played pretty well, and he's played every tournament. I mean, he's, he has, I don't know, if he's taking a week off, I don't know where it is. Maybe the Honda Classic. I mean, he's played everywhere. I mean, the guy's played a lot, a lot of golf. And he's played well, and he finally paid off. He did not need to win the tournament. He was still going to be uh, in the mix. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, he got the job done. Funny, no Ricky Fowler at the Master, Masters. He's missed seven straight cuts. He's, not, he's no longer top 50 in the world. I don't know if you knew that. And Hoffman yesterday, who finished two strokes back, needed to win the tournament to get in, did not. Masters begins on Thursday. Uh, we look forward uh, to the Masters. Anything else I missed? So the golf, the NBA, uh, we don't need any NBA information right now. Uh, the golf is what I told you. Nobody cares about the Miami Open in tennis, um, nor do I. The only tournament, by the way, this year, basically there's two tournaments this year in America in tennis, this and the U.S. Open, uh, maybe Cincinnati. There's nothing going on. I can't get into that. Uh, you know, the NCAA we've spent all day on. We're going to go right back to it here in a minute. Uh, and the baseball. That's where you are on a busy afternoon. We'll get your calls in when we continue. We're on Mad Dog Unleashed. Don't- 